trends, basically, as, as I see them in the technologies that impact us in the future. Um, I'll start with the petascale, exascale era, uh, which is really the biggest computers, which set the standard and the expectations for the whole industry that follows them, and the bulk of our very attractive commercial marketplace that trails um, the um, biggest players. All right, so I'm going to start with petascale to exascale. This is an eye uh, chart. Um, the eye chart is uh, a group of academics and national labs folks' predictions, all straight, uh, linear on a log scale predictions of how we get from uh, petascale to exascale. That is a factor of a thousand times larger in 10 years. Uh, so there's no question that in getting from a factor of a thousand times more cycles per second completed, lots of stuff gets bigger. The big trends are expected to remain constant, but we do need to adjust to a lot of pressure points. I put stars on um, the things that attract us as concerns. The total memory size of these systems is anticipated to be 64 petabytes of data in the memory live at the same time. Now, that is the number one driving issue from our consideration because the big function we provide in satisfying uh, the fault tolerance strategies in exascale computers, in, in any HPC um, computer cluster, is to dump memory periodically so that component failures allow them to stop, unmap the failed component, reload from the last checkpoint, and re-execute. So we are the bulk uh, work of the fault tolerance strategy, and that's done through checkpoint. It's why write bandwidth for some of our customers is so very important. Right? Uh, we'd have to dump that amount of memory. The really interesting thing is I would think that the most uh, challenging from a cost point of view technology in the generation, new generation of computers is memory technology. It's expected to be 40% of the cost of the system, 40% of the power consumption of the system in one technology. So uh, the numbers that they put up for memory technology are a compromise between what the technicians and the vendors tell them that they really can on the low side and what the applications people want. So I would hope that that number is in fact going to be lower. But down from it, what you get is on the order of a hundred thousand to a million nodes. We're already getting outward of um, you know, 30,000 growing to 100,000 nodes in the biggest computers. And these machines are going to get at least 10 times larger. But most of the parallelism, most of the performance is going to come inside the nodes as very large numbers of cores. The numbers of cores are expected to be on the order of um, you know, 1,000 to 10,000 cores in a node. Uh, so most of these, it's quite possible that these are GPU cores. It's quite possible that they're very small. Uh, but we're going to have very large numbers of them. So the total concurrency is going to be on the order of large numbers of millions, possibly billions of concurrent threads. Here's where the stress comes to us in terms of checkpoints. Every one of those is an open for write. And they're at least in the same directory, possibly in the same file. All right. And so there's a lot of stress on our very large numbers of uh, files and very large numbers of concurrent writes. Um, the capacity that we're going to see is still probably 10 to 30 times main memory, probably 10 uh, for financial reasons. Um, and so that's a, lot of mem that's a lot of bytes, lots and lots of bytes. Uh, the bandwidth. Basically, the model is the bandwidth needs to, in the same amount of time as it used to, dump the much larger memory. So if the memory is 1,000 times bigger, then the bandwidth is expected to be 1,000 times larger. All right, so we're running them in the um, 50 gigabyte per second range. And nominally, the checkpoint uh, restart mechanism in the largest computers needs to be in the 50 gigabyte per, um, terabyte per second range. All right. Now, that's too high, and everybody knows it's too high. Um, so there is a way to do something about it that uses SSD. These, by the way, are the very biggest computers. There's going to be only a couple of these built in the, in the and it's not going to be night, uh, 2018. It's going to be 2020, maybe 21. And um, they're going to be built by bizarre mechanisms by some very large 
national uh, lab or um, agency, and uh, it is not highly replicated. It's, there's not very many of them, but the downstream technology, all the commercial markers that are following the HPC space are drawing from the same design and the same problem space. So it's hopefully what happens is what we see in the downstream size is an increase on the order of a thousand from where they are now, far, far short of this, but still significant increases. Um, the plan for dealing with this <clears throat> is not to write directly to disk because disks are only getting 20% faster per year and the system is getting at least twice as fast per year, which would mean the total number of disks would have to grow at 70% per year. Uh, as a result, the pressure on the bandwidth is not intended, not expected to be satisfied directly by disks. 60, 70 terabytes per second going into, it goes into 200,000 disks, right? It's not what they expect to be able to afford. As a result, what they're thinking about is um, doing a double buffer strategy. The double buffer strategy is to write it from the main memory in the compute nodes out to some secondary memory so that they can, as fast as they possibly can, 60 terabytes per second, so they can then con resume the computation simulation. And then, in a tiering type strategy, this copy uh, propagates back to disk. And it has the whole uh, t um, execution time till the next checkpoint. And so if we assume the checkpoints are basically 10% of um, the amount of time it takes to capture a check, uh, checkpoint is 10% of the time until the next checkpoint, i.e. 90% of the cycles are on computation and 10% are on taking checkpoints, then we'll have a factor of 10 longer. And the bandwidth drops from being instead of 6, 50, 60 terabytes per second down to being five, six terabytes per second. That's still a hundred times bigger than we're doing right now. So there's, there's and by the way, this is still 10 years away. So um, there's a lot to happen in between. I want to point out that a lot of this hangs on the notion of using every last little bit of power that the computer has. So if, uh, the, the HPC world tries to get everything from the computer. If they were to back off to saying, as long as I get 50%, that's good enough, then there is completely alternate ways that they can handle this. They could literally take the computation, run it twice, one on one half of the computer, one on the other half of the computer. And when a component fails, there is something else in place to continue the computation. Right? And there becomes a whole new range of solutions if they go to that kind of solution. It's my personal bet they will eventually have to go to that kind of a solution. That's not particularly surprising. There's lots of, I mean, in, in the Google world, every file is stored three times, right? So replication and uh, total redundancy is, is not unusual in the enterprise. It's pretty unusual in the high end of the HPC.